Hi there. In this QuickBooks online video, I'm going to quickly look at uh, setting up a company. So I'm just going to quickly log in. And this company that I'm using presently has already had the company name added to it. And I'm just going to change that. Plus, I'll add a customer, a vendor, and import some inventory items, add some bank accounts, as well as some regular general ledger accounts. Um, by the way, this can be done at any time um, in a company's life. You don't need to do it at, right at the beginning, but of course it makes most sense too. So I'm going to choose Sign In and QuickBooks Online. Um, I'm going to quickly sign in. One second. So again, this uh, company originally set up as a music shop, but uh, it's actually going to be a computer shop. So I'm just going to change the company name. Um, I haven't done anything else with this company, so I can quickly add uh, the particular bank accounts, um, customers, vendors, and inventory items as well as services. So I'm going to choose my gear icon, account and settings, and then for the company name, I'm going to change that to uh, West Coast Computers. And I'll choose Save. So that's no problem at all to do that. And you can change the um, address if you like. I'm just going to imagine it's the same. I'm going to quickly um, add my sales taxes as well. So I'm just going to close this. I'm going to go to taxes, sales taxes. There we go. And set up sales tax. And I'm in British Columbia. I don't need to change anything here. Once we actually pay taxes, we'll be assigned uh, Service Canada. Service Canada will assign us a number to use to remit our taxes. And same thing with the Minister of Finance for the province. I don't have that information yet, so I can add it later. And I can choose OK. If you need to go back and modify those settings, the screen looks a bit different than when you first go there through the little wizard. You can add more taxes. This will be fine for me. So I'm going to quickly add a customer. So I've, I've looked at adding customers before, but we didn't add uh, the customer balances. And again, this can be done um, at any time. You can add a customer and a balance at any time. I'm going to choose Add Customer Manually. And this is Mary Marjorie Chance. And again, in real life, you would collect all of her data. I'm just going to jump to what's important right now, which is her opening balance. Now, when you enter these balances, I'm going to make that as of three days ago. Um, when you add these balances, an invoice gets created on the receivable side, a bill on the vendor side. I'll show you that in a moment. So there's my customer and her balance. I'm just going to quickly add a vendor balance. So expenses, suppliers, new supplier, and this is Kingsway Stationery. That's actually the company name. I'm just going to cut that and put it down here. And again, I'll just quickly add a balance right at the bottom there. As of Friday. So again, you can add vendors, uh, also known as suppliers and customers, and their balances at any time. I'm going to quickly add a bank account. Uh, you would think that you can do that through banking, but you can't. You have to choose the gear icon and then go to your chart of, chart of accounts. there. See your chart of accounts. And again, I just set up this company, but I'm given a full chart of accounts for your typical revenues and expenses. So I'm going to choose new bank checking. And this is uh, Royal Bank checking.
and its balance is 89.37.54 as of Friday. And I'll choose save and close. Um, I'll add one more bank, uh, one more general ledger account. Um, I shall add, uh, I'll add three more general ledger accounts. So this, uh, the reason I'm doing it, um, adding three more is we can add accounts with sub accounts and they'll, they'll do arithmetic right in the chart of accounts. So, um, what I mean by that is I'm going to add, um, an automobile, a company car. I'm going to add the cost and the accumulated depreciation below that account and then we'll see the actual value of it in the accounts account that those are sub accounts of so let me just quickly show you so I'll choose new and this is long-term asset long-term asset or property plant and equipment for cars I think either would work and this is long-term asset Oops, long-term asset, not liability. And long-term asset. Sorry, other long-term asset, and I'm going to call this company car. And it doesn't presently have a balance. No sub-account. I'll choose save and new. And this is also a long-term asset, other long-term asset, and this is company cards. This is the actual, what we paid for the company car, the cost. And I'll make it a sub-account of the company car. And this time it does have a balance as of Friday. And save a new long-term asset now this one is accumulated appreciation accumulated amortization of other assets and I'll say this is company car depreciation and again I'll make it a sub account of company car and the balance will be negative 357 as of Friday So I choose save and close. So you see there's our bank account with its balance. And then for the company car, you see there's the account, there's the sub accounts, there's the cost, accumulated depreciation, so there's the value right there. So when you use these sub accounts, this will act as a heading for the category, but it'll also do arithmetic for the for the uh, the balances for those sub accounts. So that's an interesting uh, way of setting things up. So one last thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to quickly import one inventory item. In real life, of course, you'd import a lot, but just to quickly illustrate uh, how you could do that. Um, so one thing about my inventory items, I want to enter the quantity on hand. So I have to just quickly change one setting. So it's the gear icon, account of settings. It's under sales. sales and then under products and services I'm going to turn track inventory quantity on hand to on so since I've set up my sales taxes and I've turned on track inventory quantity on hand um, now I'll have extra columns in the sample file that I'll modify to include my inventory item so um, basically what that means is that the sample file that I download will be dynamic to some of the settings I've chosen. If there's settings that are pertinent to that file, they'll, those, those, um, those columns will be included in the file. So I'm just going to choose done here. So that's why I had to go there first. I wanted that quantity on hand column available in the sample file. So if I go to sales, products and services, and I'm just going to choose import a file 
and I'll download the sample file. And there it is. I'll quickly open it. So here's my sample file. Let me just shrink it so you can see it. So it's got a couple of columns I don't need. I'm not going to import the data for particular columns here. I don't have that data. I don't care about that data. So for example, I'm just going to drag that all the way over. I do want the products and services name. I don't want this because it will get imported if I leave that. So I'm going to quickly enable editing and clear that. And I'm going to add an inventory item. So I'm just going to quickly delete that one. And I'm going to delete those four as well. Just, again, in real life, you'd have hundreds, but just to quickly illustrate how to add the data to this file, I'm just going to have one. So I want the service name, description. I don't need an SKU, so I'm just going to delete that column. Uh, type, I'm going to keep. Sales price, I'm going to keep. Tax on sales, I'm going to keep. I don't need this F here. I'll delete that as well. purchase description. I'm just going to use the same description as sales, so I'm going to delete that as well. Purchase cost, I need that. Tax on purchases, I don't need the includes tax. Expense account, I'm going to keep that. Quantity on hand, I'm going to keep that. Reorder point, I'm going to keep that. Inventory asset and quantity as of date. Um, as you saw when we cr created inventory items on their own, quantity as of date and um, quantity on hand were required when we created those inventory items. So I'm just going to quickly shrink these, see, as much, see if we can get as much on pos as possible on the screen. And I'm just going to quickly populate with these with data. So the data has to match the data in the company. So for example, if you specify a tax code, it has to be a tax code that exists. So you have to be very explicit and exact with what you enter in these fields. So this is going to be, again, we're a computer store. So I'm just going to add the data for a laptop. So this is going to be Acer laptop. And I'll add a description, 15.6 inch Spire laptop. And it is inventory. We're selling it for $459.95. And the tax on sales is, again, the tax code that's used in this company is GST slash PST space BC. Income account. So that if we look at the chart of accounts, we'll see that there is indeed an account called sales. Just plain old sales with a capital S. Purchase, purchase cost two twenty nine ninety five. Two twenty nine ninety five. That is tax on purchases. Again, we have GST. Just plain old GST. All capitals as a tax code. It does exist. It has to be the same. Otherwise, it won't be recognized. Expense account. Again, exactly as it is stated in the company on the chart of accounts, cost of goods sold. Quantity on hand, I have six of those. We want to always have two, so the system will alert us if we drop below two. Inventory asset account, this is inventory asset. Again, that account spelled exactly that does exist. Um, now, um, in QuickBooks, uh, the date format is day, month, year, but I'm presently using um, I'm using day, month, year um, in my system. So I believe that's how I, I have to express it as well. It's the actual system date. We'll see if it comes in correct. Um, we'll be able to change this in the transactions that this created when we import this if it's incorrect. So I'm going to just go ahead and try um, 3, 12, 2021. So this is the 
date format that's in my system tray presently. And I think that's what we need. We have to go by the system, by the system not what QuickBooks uh, uses. They're, they um, also use that format, but not all workstations do. So I think I'm good. I think I got everything in there. So I'll quickly, I'm just going to save this in a place where I can find it, so I can, so I can choose it to upload it. So I'm just going to throw it on my des desktop real quick. I just have a folder for stuff I, that's finite, and I'm going to call it uh, products or something like that. And I'll continue. And I could just minimize this. I could always add more products and re upload. So I'll choose browse and grab that file. There it is there. And choose next. So it allows me, if we have different um, column names than field names here, it allows us to match those. So notice it recognizes everything except for those columns that I deleted. And I mentioned purchase description is going to be the same as sales description, so I can just pick up that as well. So you can actually use multiple columns. And I think we're good. So the next step will show us if there's anything, any data that needs our attention. If anything's in red, you may need to change it in the spreadsheet in the future. So everything is in perfect shape here. It understands all of the data. It matches what's in the system. So again, if we misspelled the inventory asset account, it might come up red. And I'll choose import. And I'll close. And I'll choose yes. And if I go to my products and services, you see I do indeed have that item there. Now we can check the actual transactions that were created um, for those balances. Let me just uh, go to my favorite method, so reports. And then for my accountant journal is what, where I'm going here. There it is there. So I did actually create some paychecks previously with this company, not just now, but you'll see all of these other entries are just for what I just did. There's my opening balance for those three accounts, those two accounts I should say, and the Royal Bank, and then the two, the, the supplier and the customer. There's those transactions, so if you made a mistake on those, you can always fix them here, right? So I'm, I want to double check that the date came in correctly for that product right so there it is there if I just click on the transaction type there it'll show me the transaction and as of date is correct but if it was incorrect if I had uh, it as uh, March 12th instead of um, December 3rd, I could just change it right now, but I don't need to change anything, it's correct. So again, that's quickly um, specifying the taxes. We made an extra setting for our quantity on hand, uh, added a vendor, aka a supplier, customer, inventory item, and a couple of accounts. And again, that stuff can be do it, done anytime within the life of your data. You don't need to do it at the beginning, but of course that makes most sense. Thanks so much for watching.